In this video I'm going to show you the last things I did to get my CNC machine up and running. To start with I cut the top and bottom pieces of the Z axis so the spindle wouldn't hit into them. Later I further cut the bottom one to refit the old dust shoe onto the spindle. I also decided to change the position of the aluminium profile under the wasteboard to make it a little more rigid and to also lower the surface and increase my cutting capacity. So I've just taken everything off. Seems like it's 63 centimeters. I got the sub wasteboard cut externally on a larger CNC based on a design I drew up in Fusion 360. The previous version had gaps around the machine which debris could build up underneath and it was difficult to clean. The aluminium extrusion slots into the grooves. I've made pretty much most of this up. I'm just going to now finish the last section which will actually be the front of the machine. I've already got eight T-nuts on this. So the protrusion is about 49 and a half mil. Because I knew on the far end of the wasteboard the profile was pushing up against the rebate, I used the feeler gauge to work out the offset from the opposite rebate and made sure that was consistent all the way along. So I'm just tightening in this side first underneath. Down the middle. Now the far side. I'm just measuring either side and it looks bang on. Making sure I'm holding it down flat at the back. And extrusion just ever so slightly creeping beyond uh, 67 centimeters, so it's like 67.2 or 3 of a mil. And it's the same on this side. I then carefully retighten the brackets, making sure to secure the face against the profile I had just fixed, ensuring the front and the back aluminium profiles were parallel. So this is going to be the front because the extrusions poking out ever so slightly beyond the MDF, and it means that, providing that it's square, um, I'll be able to clamp material onto there to do end grain milling. So what I'm going to do is secure all the plates in the four corners, fit the angle brackets underneath and try and tidy up the wiring. Um, I'm just going to cut the camera here and then come back after I've done that. I'll recap on what I've done in a moment but I'd like to jump directly to how I've wired some hard limits around the CNC machine. These link directly to the reset or e-stop terminal on the controller. I've uh, set up this relay here, it's a 12 volt relay. I've got a loop of limit switches to the extremities of the CNC machine. They're all on normally closed terminals. The 12 volt signal goes all the way through the wires and when it breaks the 5 volt signal from the controller is interrupted by the relay and that triggers the emergency stop. And what this allows me to do is to have a fail safe in place which will prevent me crashing the machine in any way. I'm not sure if this is the best way to wire it because relay is held in sort of suspension. So if I turn it on you'll see how it works. So press one of the switches, goes to zero. And then if I show you the, so that is five volts going through and when that's pressed it drops to zero it means the signal is interpreted as an emergency stop so i'm going to move the z-axis up 100 mil if the switches weren't in place this would actually crush the limit switches but 
two mil there of room. So after the plate hit the limit switch, I had about two mil of distance, which I could still move up before I started to actually damage the switch. I've adjusted this to about one mil between that, so that this physically stops the plate from crushing these parts. Each time I moved along a different axis towards another limit switch, I had to back off away from the previous limit switch and unlock the alarm setting on BCNC. If I had unlocked the alarm status and hadn't backed off from the limit that I had just pressed, the controller wouldn't recognise the already pressed limit as an alarm. And in theory I could move to another limit along another axis and the incoming plate wouldn't stop if it hit into it. So I've got a message on this. Um, alarm free, reset while in motion, gerbil cannot guarantee position, lost steps are likely, rehome is highly recommended. So if that happens I have to rehome the machine and if I press unlock The other thing I did and didn't bother filming was to fit the homing proximity sensors at right angles to their incoming plates. I used a bit of angle bar to do this and this will prevent them being accidentally crushed. I'm now going to check whether I can home the machine while the homing proximity sensor is triggered. And for the record I'm hoping I can't. Okay, so you can't see this but this is already pressed. I'm going to move the z-axis a little bit higher so that when the axis moves back, it's still in the sensor's range. And now I'm going to press home to see what happens if it kind of misses that. And I get an error here saying hard limit triggered, machine position is likely lost due to sudden and immediate halt. Rehome is highly recommended. So once I've trammed and leveled my machine, I've got the fail safes in place with the software and also a physical hard limit. Uh, wired into the reset uh, terminal and the controller which should uh, prevent me from crashing the machine for whatever reason and likely getting everything to come out of, out of position. I just glued the acrylic pipe into my original dust sheet. I had to trim this uh, up again and I did that by jigsawing the majority of the material out and then going over it with a trim bit. Uh, while that glues, I'm just going to start levelling the machine. I've already used this in a previous video with a different machine, but essentially I've slackened off the machine screws on either side. You can see I've levelled it to the back of the Z plate. I can run a light back there and it looks pretty good. I'm now just going to adjust it this way around I'm just moving the spindle around the machine just to make sure everything's okay Totally sure about the acne thread on the x-axis it just feels like it's very wobbly even though it's held in place on either side it's just not thick enough Okay, I think it's ready to go. I'm just going to bite the bullet and do it. I've checked the distance that it can plunge down, so I've moved the uh, limit switch at the bottom a little bit further. Once I've done this, then I'll reposition it so that if I make a mistake, I won't be able to plunge all the way through the actual wasteboard. This is the sub wasteboard, which I'll be screwing the wasteboard onto. I think it's in the right position. I'm working from the center of my uh, DXF file. Let's see what happens. While that's cutting, I'll recap on what I've done to the machine. In a mad rush, I didn't film everything, but this is the list. The first was to cut the top and bottom Z-axis motor plates, so the spindle movement wasn't impeded. This was my mistake, and I've also updated my 3D model. I also lowered the wasteboard height, which involved cutting and refitting the aluminium profile. 
I wired hard limit switches at the extremities of all the axes to the reset terminal on the controller via an opto isolated relay to prevent me from crashing the machine. I made new mounts for the homing proximity sensors which are held at 90 degrees to the incoming plates and again prevent the expensive parts from being accidentally crushed. I've checked the hard and homing limits, adapted the old dust shoe to fit the new machine, leveled and trammed the spindle, checked the movement. I also cut the inset nut mounting holes for the wasteboard and fitted the drag chain which included making the aluminium parts. And this is the finished machine more or less. I think I might have routed these a little bit too far and there's some gaps between the rebate and the T-track which is annoying. I've actually done quite a bit to the controller since the previous shot which has dramatically improved the performance of the machine but I'll go over those changes in a separate video because they amount to quite a few. The main thing is the machine itself is completed and ready to use. It's not the most heavy duty CNC machine out there but for my purposes and budget it's evolved into something that's both novel with its pivot plates and physical hard stop which is easy to tram and square and judging by this footage it can cut really well. So that leaves me with the last thing to say which is thanks again for watching for all the comments and to my supporters on Patreon and I hope if you're making a CNC machine as well that you've learned from my mistakes and worked twice the speed. So like I said in the next video I'll talk about all the changes I've made to the controller. Until then.